Good day, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. I have a little of time before Mr. Jefferson's class, so life is strange. I can do some wandering. Okay, let's go see if Mr. Suspicious is still so suspicious. Are you going to Sir, ah, party? hello, Max. Like would you like to tell me what you wouldn't yesterday? No, I mean I don't have anything to tell you. More secrets. Now, excuse me, I have a meeting to attend. To crouch. If I was normal, I'd be super excited about going to a major shindig. Justin always looks stoned. You can really learn a lot about a school by the weird shit posted on the boards. Best singer ever in Oregon looking for best guitarist ever to form Kika's band to take over the world. Okay. Uh... October 8th. I woke up this morning to a different, a different person, even if nobody knows yet. After yesterday's intense revelations with my rewind power and saving Chloe's lungs, life among the other cray cray, as Victoria might say, say, events at Blackwell, I have to assume everything is different now, and I thought exposing my photos to the world was going to be hard. After Chloe dropped me off back at my dorm yesterday, I tried to find out more about the freak snowfall that happened when we were at the lighthouse, but the local meteorologists are stumped so far. I felt so jacked up that I pulled an all-nighter on time and physics research. Objective, I should attend art class. Not being Warren, I ended up knowing less about my situation than when I started. I don't really think that my tornado vision <coughs> and the snowfall are connect connected, but at this point I have no clue what to believe. I'm just so glad Chloe and I are a team again. That has to be destiny. Now I have to hit the showers and get ready to meet Chloe for breakfast. Lord knows I need it. I ran into Kate in the showers and she asked for the October Country back. I love that book and definitely need to get my own copy. Of course, when I was in the shower, Victoria and Taylor barged in and totally started dragging on poor Kate about the video. Just to be complete, our thoughts they wrote the link on the mirror. I truly don't understand how they get off on acting like that. Victoria has everything. What does she gain by being a bully to Kate Marsh? We're supposed to be adults here, but I swear it's like Kate, like Battle Royale, just without the dystopia and exploding heads. Only Victoria could make me feel dirty in a shower. After being forced to listen to Victoria and Taylor rag on Kate about the video, I headed back to my room. I didn't really have any time to chill out. I had to get dressed and find Kate's book in my own mess, rushing all the while to not be late for Chloe. As if things weren't dramatic enough, I, had, I got a creepy text from a private number. Nathan, Victoria, no clue. I really have to start watching my back. I still had to give Kate's book back, so I went to her room. I knew she wasn't doing good, but I didn't know how bad until I went in. All the lights were off, blinds closed, like some emo goth then, and Kate is the opposite of Emma or Goff. She was just crying in the dark. And it was so sad to see her like this. More sad than it is that I wished I could take a picture of her friend in her expressional misery. Kate admitted that she thinks something more happened to her than just a video. Plus she told me that Nathan Prescott gave her a ride from the party to the ER and she thinks he did something to her but she doesn't remember what. It's hard not to believe Kate considering what kind of person she is and what kind of person Nathan is. I've seen myself exactly what that guy is capable of. Of course, Kate asked if she should go to the police and the principal. I felt like absolute shit, but I told Kate she shouldn't go to anybody until she had more proof she was drugged. That video doesn't help her case at all, and this could all backfire big time. She's going up against the whole Prescott empire, not just one rich white boy on dope. She wasn't too thrilled by my answer. I don't think she trusts me to be the one investigating all this. How can I blame her? Sometimes I wonder w what I'm actually doing besides getting myself into more trouble. Kate even booted me out of her room. Hello, everybody, everyday hero. <coughs> I ran into Warren or rather Warren was waiting to run into me. Naturally, he wanted to know what the hell happened out in the parking lot with the Chloe and Nathan show. Once again, I felt like a dick because I should have gotten a hold of Warren to see if he was okay after we just left him in the lot. I do owe Warren. 
I only told him a little about what was going on with Nathan, the less he knows the better for him. I would love to at least tell him about my ability to reverse time and space, but ironically I don't think it's the right time or space. Besides, he would want to marry me immediately, just so he could have his own human time machine, or capture me for scientific experiments, or make me go to the drive-in with him. Oh wait, I did say I would go to the drive-in with him. Hope he doesn't make a lame move on me, not that he would, egomaniac. Warren and I do have a lot in common, but he's like a super cool geek brother. Anyway, I definitely need a movie escape. Before catching the bus out to meet Chloe, I saw Nathan talking to David, which made me nervous. Otherwise, I had a nice soundtrack ride to the Two Whales Diner. Talked about going back in time. I haven't seen the diner in five years, but it looks exactly the same. Although now there are way less fishermen and way more dumped food gods than when we were kids. Chloe and I had the best backdrop to play pirate. All chips and a big ocean. Chloe was late, duh, so I was happy to be distracted by seeing Joyce again. The diner is like a museum piece, except with customers. Better still, the food hasn't changed at all. Joyce seemed really glad to see me again and she didn't give me a guilt trip for not staying in touch. After William died, she wanted to move forward with a, li with a new life and husband. Chloe doesn't want to accept that. Joyce naturally gave me shit for corrupting Chloe with my devil weed, though I'm not sure she even believed it was mine. What could I say? I can see she actually loves David, even if I don't see how. The breakfast was so worth the grief though. So much drama, I haven't even finished my breakfast. Finally Chloe showed up, more bubbly than I would have thought after almost getting killed in the bathroom yesterday. It makes me happy to see her smile, but that smile meant trouble, since all she really wanted was for me to show off my rewind power. So I did, and I had to admit, I felt like a total boss. Except I did start feeling weak and woozy the more I rewound. I even got a nose split, which kind of freaked me out. Chloe always wants more, so she demanded we go to her top secret lair. She still had to get pissed off at me because I dared to answer Kate's call. I'm not a fan of Chloe's petulant side. She tried to make me feel like an ass, but screw that. Kate was so happy I answered I actually felt worse for her. Chloe has to know that I can have two friends at once. Just when I thought shit couldn't get crazier, Chloe took me to a secret lair, the city dump, perfect for Halloween, like where the vehicles and appliance ghost of Arcadia Bay came to rot and rust. Urban dystopia porn. But instead of taking cool photos, Chloe had me do some silly kind of fun gun tricks. Until the guy, ah, until the guy Chloe owes money to showed up, some skeevy guy called Frank. Uh, he demanded Chloe pay him back or else. I was shocked that he wasn't the lone shock I had expected, but I could literally feel his bad vibe. I still can't see how my best friend ended up involving, involved with a loser like Frank. Things were truly crazy when Frank took Chloe's gun. Or should I say David's gun? And now we have to worry about one more lunatic after Chloe. And maybe me. Chloe really flipped out when she saw that Frank was wearing one of Rachel's Am Rachel Amber's bracelets. That means, means we definitely have another suspect. This is so not how I intended to spend my time back in Arcadia Bay. After all that dramatic volume XXXIII, Chloe and I ended up taking a walk along the tracks deep in the woods. We both needed to hear nothing but the sounds of nature and wildlife. I was shaking inside from our encounter with Frank and though Chloe found stuff, I could tell she was shaken too. She told me everything about Frank, which explained why he was trying to blackmail Nathan. It shocks me that the girl I grew up with watching Spongebob ended up in such a scary orbit. Still, I felt safer with her at my side and I was glad we had a moment of peace. So, it probably wasn't the best idea to lay down on the tracks and wax about live ETC, as Chloe's leg got caught in the rail just as the goddamn train showed up. Of course, I was, I was off trying to take a photo for my portfolio, and then I had another quick flash of my tornado vision. I could see it, almost feel it, tearing the sky apart. My head felt like it was exploding, like in that 80s film scanner. Just as fast as the vision came in, it disappeared. I may be in denial about what this apocalypse image means or doesn't. <coughs> then I heard Chloe screaming for help and I was shitting kittens. Her foot was stuck in a damn rail and naturally the train was coming round the mountain. I was pretty proud of myself for coming up with a drastic if not destructive solution of saving Chloe once again. But just in case this journal ever falls into the wrong hands, it's going to remain our BFF secret, so there. 
Our morning adventure over, Chloe dropped me back off at campus. She was so sweet and said that this had been the best week of her life, despite everything. That made me feel so awesome. Chloe really sees us like we're taking over the world. But what if it, I hadn't been able to use my rewind power to get her off the tracks? Chloe might have to lower expectations, and so will I. Whew. Uh, okay, we opened the principal last time. I can't figure out where Principal Wells is coming from. For some reason, he seems to be suspicious of me all at all times. Who knew I was that much trouble? He wanted to know why I was hanging out in the halls. I started like a fool. He has so much power over my scholarships. I get uber nervous around him. I've seen him laughing with other teachers and students, so I know he must have a problem with me. He also seems a little stressed out. I would... Me too if I had to oversee Blackwell and all its drama. I thought I smelled alcohol in his breath, but I could have been his cologne, right? But I remember my first meeting in his office, and he was so nice and made me feel like I was becoming part of a special world. He said he hoped I would become a great photographer and someday return the favor to Blackwell. I thought that was a bit of wistful thinking, but it made me feel good. I just need to lay low around him until I can somehow gain his trust. Okie dokie. These elite assholes throw a lot of big parties. Another chance for Nathan Prescott to dose somebody. Hey, Courtney. Ciao, Max. No photos, please. I have to come up with a guest list for a Vortex Club soiree. Really? Oh, like you care. I'm not anti-soiree. You seem anti-fashion, though. A Vortex Club party has a strict dress code. Do you even have a dress? <laughs> Sorry, but nice try. Hey, Courtney. Ciao, Max. <laughs> really? Oh, like you care. I'm sure the Vortex Club has a dress code. As you can see, I would need your advice on what to wear. Thanks, Max. I didn't think you noticed high fashion. Tell you what, I'll put you down on the guest list, and before the party, I can give you some tips. Cool. Thanks, Courtney. I'll send you the party info later. Back to the list. Okie dokie. Excuse me, Mr. Madsen? I know things got a little heated yesterday in Chloe's room. Was that really your reefer? Yes, it was. You know that marijuana is almost legal in Oregon. I can get it at Blackwell. Are you gonna bust me now, Mr. Madsen? Even I'm not that much of an asshole. And I am sorry about yesterday. I was wrong, but upset. Cannabis is not a big deal to you, but it has been to Chloe. You're a combat veteran. She's no threat to you. If I didn't care about her, I wouldn't care at all. When I was her age, I was out raising a lot more hell. She's better than that. All you kids are. So is Kate Marsh. This is difficult. Uh, what about Kate? What about Kate? You step between us at a pretty bad time. She's another matter entirely. Kate hasn't done anything wrong. Max, this isn't just about Kate Marsh. My concern is for the safety of all Blackwell students, including you. That'll take more than surveillance cameras. It will take more than Ms. Grant and her petition to find missing students. That isn't is... that your responsibility as head of security? Unless you know something about Rachel Amber that nobody else does. I don't want to fight with you anymore. I don't want to fight with anyone anymore. That's all, Max. Uh, she's kind of decided he's a bad guy already. <laughs> hey girl, sit down, sign something. I'm in the sci-fi lab now. I'm no Schrodinger Kitty. See you soon. I still have time. I could go see Warren playing mad scientist in the lab. 
Okay, where's the lab though? It's the entrance. Not there. That's blue. Victoria and her friends shopping for the party. That reminds me, I have to score some weed from Nathan. Bring me the brain, Igor. Hey, Warren. Are you okay? You look thoughtful yet confused. Maxwell Silver Hammer. Perfect timing. I need help with this chemical experiment. Asking me for help means you're screwed. I have to add either a bit of potassium or sodium. It's up to you to decide, Dr. Max. I'm not sure why you're letting me decide your fate, but go... Potassium. Potassium it shall be. If this works, you get a free hug. Weird science. Make a big brain. Thing. Hey, Warren. Maxwell, so asking me for help. I have to add either a bit of. I have a vision. Go diem. Go diem. That's the worst pun I've ever heard. Yet Max has spoken. Sodium it is. Damn, zip, nothing, nada. Can't be that hard. Hey, Warren. Maxwell, so asking me for. I have to add either a. I actually think you should use a lot of potassium. I mean, a shitload. See? Look at that smile. You're going to become a scientist yet. Let's do this thing. Yo. <laughs> she blinded me with science. Yes! That was a blast! But let's keep it a professional secret. Cool? Yes! That was a blast! But let's keep it a professional secret. Cool? Howdy, Brooke. Hi, Max. Making your daily rounds? How was your drone? Miss Grant busted me flying it over the parking lot. Aww. She's all jacked up about surveillance bullshit. Like I was spying on Warren's new car. You already planted a GPS on him? I borrowed the one he has on you. Well, I'm helping Warren with his latest experiment. Oh, I guess he needed a neophyte assistant so he wouldn't be threatened. But you came to his rescue anyway. Not me. Warren doesn't need my help. The boy knows things. I need to know if you can help me with a potassium experiment. No can do, Max. I'm all about robotics, not chemistry. Give me a drone over a beaker. I hate to hit and run, but... Don't let me get in your way. So long. Hi, Miss Grant. Funny, I was just thinking about you, Max. Thanks again for taking a stand against camera surveillance here. Every signature counts. Miss Grant, can I ask you a possibly dumb science question? You know my stock teacher answer. There are no dumb questions, ask away. Would you add potassium or sodium to a chemical mix for this week's experiment? Neither, unless you want a face full of powder. I would add chlorine. I'm just thinking about all the autumn photos I want to take. Oh, this is my favorite time of year. I do love the season change. This whole campus is a visual delight. I know Mr. Jefferson loves to shoot around here. 
You must know Mr. Jefferson pretty well by now. I certainly know him as a talented artist and terrific teacher. I've been here a little longer, but he's made a bigger mark. I have to say, it's not quite autumn enough yet. I can't wait for fall either. It's all about the atmosphere. You're the artist and I'm the scientist. Like yin and yang. How's your campaign going? You signed the petition, now it's your campaign too. Thanks for stepping up. More people would rather send a text than sign a petition. That's how they keep us all distracted. Nobody will notice cameras on every square foot. I know. I really hope you keep those cameras from taking over Blackwell. Max, with students like you, we sure will. I'm sorry, Miss Grant, but I have to get going. Go on, Max. We'll talk again. Real soon. Yes! That was a blast! But, let's keep it a professional secret. Cool? Yes! That was a blast! But, let's keep it a professional secret. Cool? Hey, Warren. Are you okay? Maxwell Silver? Asking me for a... Have that either... Wrong, Warren. You need to add chlorine. Not potassium or sodium. Chlorine? I didn't think of that. Can't argue with a confident scientist. Let's try it. Eureka! She's got it. No, you got it. Don't be so modest, Dr. Caulfield. That was fun helping Warren. He's pretty cute when he's in full-on geek mode. Yo, Maxwell Smart. Talk later, cool? You can't help me? I'm trying, but you have to understand my position. Why? You don't understand mine. Nobody does. Nobody. What do you want from me? Excuse me, Max. Can you come over here? Sure. You look worried. Is everything okay? Sorry to bother you, Mr. Jefferson. I'm only bothered when you avoid turning in photos. But you know this. So what can I do for you, Max? Just between you and me? I'm worried about Kate Marsh. That's no secret. Word on the street is that you and Kate had a little confrontation with our security chief yesterday. Mm, not exactly. Never mind. Sorry. I have to go and work on my photo. You can talk to me anytime. And Max, can I talk to you about Kate? I assume you know about this viral video. Kate is freaked out by all of this. She can't do homework while she's being tormented on a daily basis. What if Kate brought this on herself? What? She means well, but maybe she doth protest too much. She seems like she's holding back the truth. Have you talked to her? Yes, I have. I don't want to talk about no. this to you. I just don't want Kate Marsh to be the next Rachel Amber. Rachel Amber? What does she have to do with Kate? With all her missing persons posters around, it's hard not to think of her. Rachel was nothing like Kate. And Principal Wells said you had something on your mind you wouldn't tell him. Nothing, my brother. You care Nothing to do with you. Not right now. I'll tell you everything as soon as I figure it out. I'd like to believe that, Max. 
It just seems like there's a lot of drama around you this week. Yeah, Listen, well, should I? Excuse me, Max. Mind your business. Hello. Yes? Uh, hold on. I have to take this, so just go into class and I'll be there soon. Hmm. I don't like him. Make me beautiful, Hayden. Bow. 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 No you time to talk, Max. Posing in progress. Do you think Max right. will be pissed we're she sitting at her desk? Up. Oh, I'm sure I she'll report us to the principal. You like I give a flying fuck. Or should Here comes the mysterious Max, disguised as a pixie hipster. Like all the other precious twee artists here. You really nailed me. Meow! Bring out the claws. I love seeing chicks fight. Right. Can I sit at my table now? Max thought we were going to be buds. Fucking ha ha. <laughs> Okay, why is David taking photos of Kate? Now this is so wrong and weird. What up, Max? Hey, Warren. I saw Kate earlier and her eyes were puffy from crying. Kate has a lot on her plate. I didn't know what to say, and she, she didn't tell me anything. Okay, I know you love me, but if you're not in this class, beat it. Everybody else, please sit Maybe down. I'll see we you have later. a lot to cover today, and so little time as usual. I see all the usual suspects here. Anybody seen Kate Marsh? I think everybody has seen Kate Marsh by now. <laughs> She's not feeling good. Sounds like you're giggling about a video gone viral. Maybe it involves a student or a friend. I wonder how it would feel to have false images of yourself shot out all over the world for people to judge. Usually, people need something to judge, so they never take a good look at themselves. It's cool that Mr. Jefferson published his own little book of photo tips. We can thank reality TV for some of that. In the end, we can only blame ourselves for participating. Speaking of participation, there are a few souls here who have yet to enter a photo in the contest. Like Max Caulfield, for example. Who I know can't wait to enter, right? I'm sure you read the syllabus like it was a Harry Potter book, so you must know today we're studying chiaroscuro. That beautiful word about the contrast between light and dark. The shadow play that gives photography such visual power. It's basic yin and yang. Black and white images are effective precisely because of their contrast. Although we don't technically see in my Yo! Some crazy shit is going down in the girl's dorm! Zachary, do not come into my class like that ever again. Listen, everybody remain seated. Uh, no. Dismissed. That's what we got to do with Kate again. See that? Is this for real? It's flipped out! I didn't think she was that much. What? Oh no. Kate! No! Oh god. <gasps> I, I have to do something to help her. I don't know what to do. She can't die. She can't. Not now. I have to try something. I won't be able to rewind again and again. Oh no. Do we break time? Keep going, Max. You can 
Do it! I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I wonder if I can get up the stairs, maybe? Yes. Okay. Come on. Oh! What are you doing here, Max? Stop! Don't come near me! Not now. It won't work. I don't have any power. Now I have to do this by myself? Max, seriously, don't come near me. I will jump. Okay, okay. I'm right here. Kate, please. Oh, Max, I know you want to help me. I love that you stepped up to David, but it doesn't matter now. Nothing matters. You matter, and not just to me. I do want to believe that. Kate, your life is still yours, and we can get through this together. Let me help. I'm glad to hear you worry about me. That makes me feel better. Mm. I'll always be here for you, Kate. My new motto is, friends come first. I did feel better talking to you on the phone. I always feel like you really listen. Kate, please trust me. Come stand by me, okay? I can help you now. I know I can. This morning, I erased the web link to the video. It was written on the shower room mirror. That's your story now. How can I trust you? What about this morning when I needed help? You told me to do nothing. Hey, I'm gathering proof that Nathan Prescott drugged you. And you're not the only victim. So you have to help me take Nathan down. Nathan Prescott? That makes sense. He's a scumbag. You have proof now? Soon. Then straight to the police. Think of it like we're cleansing Blackwell. You do have my back, Max. That's the first time I've felt hopeful in a week. Good. We all need to have each other's backs. So, I want you to come with me now. Please, you don't have to do this. Max, I'm in a nightmare and I can't wake up. Uh, unless I put myself to sleep. Then everybody at Blackwell can post pics of my body. I'm horny on the internet forever. No wonder they call it a web. Nothing can ever get out. Like my video. I wish I could go back in time and erase everything. good options. Uh, Nobody cares, Kate. There'll be another viral Victoria video in a day and everybody will forget. You can't scrub my video from the internet and that's how I'll be remembered unless I jump. Kate, you can't do this to all the people who care about you. No, nobody cares about me. Nobody. What about your mother, Kate? You'll destroy her. She doesn't care about a video. She loves you. You don't know my mother at all. She already thinks Satan has me on the fast track to hell. Let's prove it. No. no.
I know this isn't pleasant for any of us, but we have to go over what happened before Miss Marsh, before she did what she did. Officer Barry will be taking notes for the official police inquiry. I'm sure you'll give him your full cooperation. Such a tragedy. But there must be a reason for everything. We need to find out why Kate Marsh would be driven to such desperate action. As principal of Blackwell Academy, I take my duties seriously. I take the well-being of every student more seriously. What happened today should never happen in a hall of wisdom and knowledge. Mr. Madsen, as our head of security here, those roof doors should always be locked. That's just standard operating procedure. They were not, and that is indeed your responsibility. Mr. Jefferson, I know you can't be expected to know what your students are going through, but Kate has assisted you in class, so you should have known something was amiss. Mr. Prescott, since you are responsible for the Vortex Club parties, and since Miss Marsh did attend your last party, you'll have to answer some more questions. Miss Caulfield, why exactly were you on the route with Kate Marsh? Did she tell you her plan? Or anything at all? Please, tell us everything. I saw Mr. Jefferson talking to Kate right before our class. Then she ran off crying. Mark, I do know that Miss Marsh has assisted you on class events. Kate, Miss Marsh has been very withdrawn lately. I assume this awful video was the cause. I hated seeing the students laugh at her. She told me Max was the only one who believed her, would take her calls and actually listen to her. She shouldn't have asked to be on video macking with some dudes. You ass! She didn't ask for any of this. No, on the contrary. Max was right to bring this up. Now, I wanted to help, but I guess I was too late. Well, now this is problematic. The publicity is rising, and perhaps you shouldn't represent Blackwell at the Everyday Heroes contest in San Francisco. Are you serious? I am. We don't need any negative press about that event. And we need to involve the Academy in possible disciplinarian measures for you. I understand that. And there are bigger things at stake than me. The life of a young girl, for one. All right, Miss Caulfield, please sign here to confirm what you've told us. I'll continue this investigation from there. My head is killing me, but I think I can use my power again. We don't have any proof about Nathan. I don't know what to do. All I know is that Kate was at a party and Nathan dosed her. She got wasted and kissed some boys on a viral video without a clue. I dosed her? <laughs> without a clue. Have you seen the video? Whatever. Kate was loaded and You're playing a liar. the field. You told Kate you took her to the emergency room. I said I was going to take her to the ER. She sobered up eventually. Bullshit. Something happened to her and you know it. How about we talk about you waving a gun in the girl's hey, bathroom? Hey, that's total slander. I could sue you and this school so fast. I already have a personal lawyer. Wait, Max. You told me that nothing happened yesterday. Are you just making things up? How can I trust you? You can't. She's smoking and selling dope, not saving lives. No, I'm not. And that has nothing to do with Kate Marsh. I'll have to investigate to see if this accusation is true. Therefore, Max, I'm obliged to contact your parents and suspend you for a few days. Excuse me. I think Max and Nathan need a break before we grill them further. A friend and fellow student is dead. And they don't need this forum right now. Yes, I'm kind of devastated right now. 
I'd like to be with my family. All right, Miss Caulfield, please sign here to confirm what you've told us. I'll continue this investigation from there. I'm just gonna go with my first. Mm, with that. I saw. Please sign. I don't know what to do. But that is it for today's episode. As soon as she signs this contract, I hope you guys enjoy it. And hopefully, I make choices. Well, I think choices. we know less now than when we started. <sighs> we'll be assisting the police with further inquiries. I know this has been a stressful day. I wish I had the power to change it all for the better. So thank you for coming in. And this is difficult. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.